So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy Ellen. I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute, man. And we back with some more conspiracy theories and unexplained mysteries of ancient history. All right. If you're new, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Join the fam. And let's check this next one out. Hit that like button. NASA has released images of a never before seen phenomenon where a star named Betelgeuse blew its top off and ejected a gigantic portion of its surface mass. The event is known as Surface Mass Ejection, SME, and according to the Space Agency, the ejection was 400 billion times the mass of an ordinary solar flare from our Sun. Scientists term the event as watching stellar evolution in real time. A star blasting off such huge chunks of its physical form has surprised many. The catastrophic explosion of this super red giant is upsetting a lot of what we know in the universe. Why did Betelgeuse blow off its top? How will that affect the universe? Let's find out. I don't know, maybe hopefully it's like a pressure relief valve. You know what I'm saying? Just take a little bit of pressure off, take it back. Now we're good for a little while longer. Maybe we won't get to see the explosion, but uh, I doubt it. I think it's coming. Constellations are made up of many stars and are arranged in accordance with mythology and legends. They are still used for navigation today. One such star is Betelgeuse, which is among the largest and brightest stars in our night sky. The brilliant ruby red glittering star known as Betelgeuse is located in the upper right shoulder of the winter constellation Orion the Hunter. When viewed attentively, though, astronomers recognize it as a seething monster with a 400-day-long heartbeat of regular pulsations. Jeez. Because of its dismal orange-red color, Betelgeuse is easily identified. It's ideal for convincing doubters that stars do, in fact, have different colors. It is also known as Alpha Orionis, and it is the second brightest star in the constellation after the blue supergiant Regal. Betelgeuse is an intriguing object for star studies and observations due to its variable nature as well as its odd name. Frequently, stars with the name Alpha are the brightest stars in their constellations. Even though Regal, Orion's other bright star, is brighter, Betelgeuse is Alpha Orionis. Due to its name, brightness, size and reddish hue, it is also one of the most well-known stars. It's noteworthy to note that this star served as the model for both the character and the movie Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse is the seventh brightest... Wait, wait, wait. Stop. Y'all lying. Ain't no way. Y'all gonna sit here and tell us that now? I watched that as a kid. That was actually a classic. That's a classic right there, bro. Um, I might have to go watch that today, but you mean to tell me Betelgeuse would... The name is derived from the star? Come on now. No, I feel like y'all trying to sell me a bridge in Brooklyn. Stop it. I, I gotta make sure I heard that correctly. It's noteworthy to note that this star served as the model for both the character and the movie Beetlejuice. Beetle I pray it's further. I pray. For those of you who don't know why I pray it's further, because if it does explode, the, the amount of radiation, that's why I pray it's farther away. In our galaxy, however, the sun only exhales tiny fragments of exhales. its outer atmosphere, known as the corona, giving the phenomenon the name coronal mass ejection, CME. As a result... Now, this is where my, my whole conspiracy brain goes into play, right? Why would, why would it be named that, right? Or why would we, and then use this word for something else, you know, still a sensitive word on this platform. So that's why I'm not using it. But why uh, there's got to be some form of connection there that I just ain't figured out or picked up on. But hear that again. That's into space, which is known as solar flares. However, the sooner give the exhales tiny fragments of its outer atmosphere known as the corona giving the phenomenon the name coronal mass ejection, CME. As a result, coronal mass ejections and surface mass ejections can occur at separate times. Somebody tell me the conspiracy here. There's got to be one. I just don't know what it is. 
What's the correlation? Because I just find that hard to believe that that is a coincidence. Come on now. Somebody, bring me up to speed, make the connection, connect the dots, all of that stuff. When a star ejects a portion of its unstable outer atmosphere, it causes a CME known as the corona. CMEs from our solar system occur very frequently and can have an impact on Earth and its inhabitants. CMEs can travel more than 1800 miles per second while ejecting magnetic fields and plasma into space, which allows them to occasionally arrive on Earth in a matter of hours. A CME can disrupt and harm Earth's satellites and power infrastructures when it occurs on the side of the Sun that faces the planet, and it occasionally puts astronauts in orbit in danger. The recent discovery shed light on the exceptional cause of Betelgeuse's dimming in 2019. The material that the star ejected exploded into space, cooled, and produced a cloud of cosmic dust that hid Betelgeuse's brightness from Earth-based observers. Additionally, Betelgeuse's renownedly steady pulsing pattern has been altered. The CME on Betelgeuse is unusual because it released 400 billion times more mass than a typical CME, which caused the star to tremble like a dish of gelatin dessert, according to NASA news release. According to Andrea Dupree, an astronomer at the Center for Astrophysics, the star's internal convection cells may be in disorder, while the photosphere, which is what we perceive as the star's surface, struggles to reconstruct itself. Astronomers have been tracking the star's constant pattern for the past 200 years, yet it no longer exists. All red giants, including Betelgeuse, are perishing, and being able to observe this process will allow researchers to learn a lot about the evolution of stars. The majority of stars in the cosmos are powered by nuclear fusion, which eventually burns out and causes a star to undergo a series of intriguing stellar changes before it finally perishes. When a star is born, it is made of hydrogen, which under the force of gravity fuses together in the star's core to create helium in a nuclear explosion. A lot of heat and light energy is typically released during the fusion process. This energy travels to the star's surface and is released as a photon into space. As the star ages, its primary fuel, hydrogen, runs out and helium starts to combine with carbon to form carbon. After the helium is used up, neon will eventually combine with carbon to form iron. When this happens, the fusion of neon with iron absorbs the energy instead of releasing it. Because there is nothing to oppose the star's very powerful gravity, when iron begins to fuse, the star collapses in on itself, giving rise to a supernova explosion. A supernova, one of nature's most powerful forces, can generate more energy and dangerous. <laughs> let's not let's not forget how dangerous that could be. That's what I'm scared of, for Beetlejuice, bro. Energy than 10 billion suns. Stars change hue during the course of their existence from the youngest, hottest blue forms to the older, cooler red varieties, depending on what stage of their stellar evolution they have reached. The Greek scientist Ptolemy 90 to 168 AD strangely referred to Betelgeuse's color as having a ruddiness. Yet three centuries earlier, Chinese astronomers ruddiness. had characterized the star as having a yellow appearance possibly implying that Betelgeuse was formerly a yellow supergiant. Larger stars frequently burn through their hydrogen faster and die off sooner. Despite being only roughly 10 million years old, Betelgeuse is certainly nearing the end of its lifespan. Our Sun, on the other hand, is still in its prime at approximately 5 billion years old. Keep on Furthermore, ticking. because Betelgeuse is nearing the end of its life, it's possible that a supernova will occur soon. Betelgeuse undergoes two dimming and brightening cycles, the second of which occurs approximately every five years and lasts approximately 100 days. The star's outer shell is thought to expand and contract during this cycle, changing the star's circumference and average temperature in accordance with each step of the cycle. 
Astronomers may gain a better understanding of how red stars lose mass in their last days before exploding in a bright supernova from Betelgeuse's explosion. As Dupree notes, we've never before us? seen a huge mass ejection on the surface of a star. We are left with something going on that we don't completely understand. It's a totally new phenomenon that we can observe directly and resolve surface details with Hubble. We're watching stellar evolution in real time. But it's unclear whether this development portends Betelgeuse's impending supernova explosion. Because the results are so unusual, NASA issues a warning that Betelgeuse may not have reached the end of its life. Even if it is, cosmic time is long and red supergiants die quickly by comparison. According to NASA, Betelgeuse will explode in the next 100,000 years. Right. Betelgeuse has been the focus of intense study since the first century BCE. More recently, a scientist by the name of Serafina Nance and her team sought to ascertain the potential timing of the supernova explosions of red supergiants like Betelgeuse. To find out how a star that large would behave over time, Nance and her team ran multiple simulations using Betelgeuse as a model. They then contrasted their findings with field observations. Why did Betelgeuse diminish suddenly and out of sync with its regular cycle when it won't likely explode for another 100,000 years? Betelgeuse was evicted from its home in the Orion OB1 Association, which comprises the stars in Orion's belt and has been seen moving through the interstellar medium at a speed of 30 kilometers per second. More than four light years wide bow shock is being produced by this speeding star. By mid-February 2020, Betelgeuse had lost around three times as much brightness from magnitude 0.5 to magnitude 1.7 after beginning to decline sharply in October 2019. By February the 17th of 2020, Betelgeuse's brightness had been stable for almost 10 days and the star had started to brighten once more. However, Betelgeuse appeared to have stopped dimming completely five days later, effectively ending the dimming episode. So it's basically been pump faking us. And any of y'all watch sports as much as I do, you, you understand what pump fake, those of you who don't watch sports, when you fake a throw, it's pretty much pump faking its explosion to me is what it's doing. That's why it has everyone on edge and constantly observing. You know, not only do we get a lot of data back in return and know how to study other stars, its size and different things like that, but at the same time, you know, we'll get to see this happen in real time. Now, what I'm waiting for them to say is what does how does that affect us and how long? You think of the explosion happening, dispersing, the radiation dispersing, how long does it take to get to us? Now, I said earlier that it's possibly 430 something light years away from us. How what what is the distance at what rate of speed will that radiation travel to get to us is the question I've been trying and been constantly in search of throughout these videos I keep watching. So that's what I'm looking for. Given that there were no significant changes in the infrared on February 24th, 2020, it appeared that the recent visual fading was unrelated to the anticipated core collapse. Another study that day concluded that the star's dimming was most likely caused by occluding large grain circumstellar dust. Dust absorption is ruled out from having a significant effect in a study that uses measurements at sub-millimeter wavelengths. But the fading appears to be caused by large star spots. Further analysis showed a dramatic rise in Betelgeuse's brightness. Between May and August, Betelgeuse is so close to the Sun that it is almost impossible to see from the Earth. Before 2020, when Betelgeuse will be in conjunction with the Sun, it was plus 0.4 brilliant. According to the observations made with Stereo A satellite in June and July of 2020, the star had faded by 0.5 since its previous ground-based observation in April. Everyone was surprised by this because the maximum and subsequent minimum were expected to occur in August-September 2020 and around April 2021, respectively. Betelgeuse's brilliance was known to shift wildly, making predictions difficult. 
The fading seems to indicate that a second dimming event may occur much sooner than expected. Pump fake the finding of a second fake dust cloud coming from Betelgeuse, which was linked to a recent considerable dimming of the star's light, was revealed by astronomers on August 30th, 2020. In June 2020, it was suggested that a cool patch on its photosphere might be the cause of the dust, and in August, a second independent investigation confirmed the initial hypotheses. The dust is thought to have been created by the gas that the star expelled cooling. A See, these stars remind me so much of volcanoes, bro. When we talk about Yellowstone, what do they always talk about it doing? Building, building up under there. That's why they try to hopefully can put something in it or maybe drill and maybe relieve some pressure or something like that. And when they say that about Beetlejuice, it just puts me in the mind of that, man. Maybe this stuff is all connected in some type of way. Massive stellar surface map. Also okay, now I got that answer, right? Because some people say, oh, we will be affected by the radiation. Some people say, as in IE per this video here, saying we won't be. But this is the first video that gave us a distance, 50, 50 light years, okay. So now I want to compare that to some more videos. So I'm going to continue my research and quest to see and compare it. So just like a doctor, you don't take the first answer you get. You want second, third, fourth, and fifth opinion, right? Exactly. So now we have a baseline from someone. We can go out and compare some more. That's what I was waiting to hear. Just to humans. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. What? I ain't gonna lie, man. That kind of relieves some stress for me a little bit because... One of the videos has scared me half to death, man, saying that we were going to receive a lot of radiation from it. It's nothing we could do about it. This one here, it doesn't. So now I have these two contrasting videos. I need to see more people saying that we're going to be fine. It needs to be 50 uh, uh, light years away for it to be to really affect us. All right. So that, that makes me feel a little bit better. But like I said, I need to see more videos say that so i'm gonna keep looking and keep i got y'all man i'm gonna keep looking we're gonna keep looking together and get that information all right but isn't that pretty dope that the explosion could have already taken place we just haven't seen the light from it yet so we don't know that to me is just insane insane when you think about it but yeah i'll get at me in the comment section man and let me know what you thought of this video and uh stick around and stay tuned man till next one i'm gone peace